But you grew some nice boobs. Poisonous bite or whatever, because they're not poisonous snakes. But I bet it doesn't tickle. Like, why are you holding this giant bird that's just sitting there blinking at me? Hala baloo, hello. I feel like I need some kind of like intro. Do you guys remember back in like the OG vlogging days when everybody had a standard intro? I don't know who started that. I don't really know like who the OG of all of that was, but like everybody had like a standard intro. It was like the same thing. Hello, hello, welcome. You know, whatever it was. The same thing that they said every time. Uh, maybe we should bring that back. Probably not. Um, anyways, I feel like hello, blue, hello is a good one. Mostly because I doubt anyone else uses that one. So we could be special. Welcome back. Uh, I'm gonna try and touch my hair a bunch. I know that irritates the crap out of people, but my hair is very dirty and needs to be washed. And I uh, just use like I don't know, 45, 50 pounds of dry shampoo in it, and then tried to like blow dry it and like bring it back to life. It's alive, but it ain't pretty. It's a Frankenstein of hair styles. Anyways, and it irritates me because <laughs> I can feel it. So welcome, welcome back. Uh, I have some sad news, some sad updates. I wish I could just keep things like fun and lighthearted all the time, but there is a reality to life that we must face and I don't want to just pass by it and not fill you guys in. We'll get to that. I am currently packaging up returns. I have a few errands to run, so I thought I'd bring you all along with me for that. It's, um, it's hot. It's quite, it's quite warm today. Uh, I'm wearing long sleeves, leggings, and sandals, but mostly because I just, I, I want to be able to wear leggings, but I don't want my butt to show, so then I'm like, oh, I'll just wear a cool, breezy button-up. It's still hot. No matter what you, like, however you slice it, it's still very warm today. Our spring, we were getting, like, this true spring. For the south, sometimes we don't get a spring. We go from winter to summer. It is no... Uh, no surprise for it to be like 75 in February. So we did kind of get like a, a really nice spring for us, but now we're starting to get into that hot weather where it's like sticky and humid and whoo, I've got to run a few errands. We've got some stuff to do, but I need to do these returns. And uh, I just wanted to open the vlog and greet you. Say hello, baloo, hello. And um, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. I have to tell you guys. Hmm. Okay, it's like snake season here. I don't know what's going on. We've lived here for two years, and I don't know, I probably lived here for a year or so before I ever saw a snake, and there have been um, quite a few of them this year already. My children have run into them as well as I have. We've gotten pretty darn good at identifying them. Uh, they are mostly like black racers. Um, we haven't seen any, let me be very clear, we have not seen any poisonous nope ropes. All the nope ropes have been the good kind of nope ropes. King snakes, black snakes, snakes that keep away the bad snakes, um, and that also help keep down the rat population and stuff. However, they're sneakity, sneakity snakes because I left my office the other day. I was like, I'm gonna go outside, go pee real quick. So I go in, I go pee. I'm inside for two seconds, you know? I mean, well, however long it takes to pee. And then I'm coming back out. I think I've got my coffee in my hand and I'm, you know, just kind of like looking directly down instead of like in front of me down, you know, as I'm walking back to the office, I'm taking my same little hard worn path here. And right when I get to this bush over here where all the chickens hide under and the dogs hide under, it's like their secret animal garden under there. I just like my eyes just kind of, you know, like your peripheral vision is like, there's something, there's something beep, 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 there's something. And I looked up and I mean, I was probably... I don't know, two feet in front of me on the ground was a four foot long black snake. And I mean, I definitely did a little whoo <laughs> and a jump back and, you know, quickly the scan of the body is this a bad snake. I was like, what is this? But the funniest part was that like four of the hens were like standing around the snake, like six inches from it doing this and like what are because it was going under their bush that they like to sleep under their bush that they like to hide under and kind of nest under because they free range all around the property but like this is their if something scares them they all come running under this bush but the snake was headed for right under the bush and the chickens were all like this guy's gonna come in our space kind of looking at me like are you gonna help us um so anyways i quickly called cr he tried to grab the snake and like drag it back to the other side of the yard so that it wouldn't go under there because the dogs were sleeping under there and there was a bunch of chickens under there. They don't usually lay eggs under there. They, they lay their eggs in their nesting boxes, but I didn't know, maybe there was eggs under there and it was gonna upset the chickens. I just figured like, go somewhere else, little snake, you know? Like you just, you need to pick another spot. The snake was not having it. He zoomed 
under there. And I did read that those snakes will bite you. They come out during the day, mostly, and they will bite you if they feel too threatened or whatever. Now, I don't, I would imagine that it's not like a dangerous, I would imagine that it's obviously not like a poisonous bite or whatever, because they're not poisonous snakes, but I bet it doesn't tickle. I'm sure it doesn't feel good. Nobody's like, I think I'll get bit by a snake today. Just because it's not poison doesn't mean you want to get bit by a snake. I'll just go ahead and tell you right now, since we're standing here and I'm already flapping my lips at you, uh, Miss Marigold, the duck, as I told you guys last time that she was having the foot problems and everything, after almost two weeks on the medication, um, she was completely out of pain meds, like to the point that they wanted to see improvement, so they didn't want her on pain meds anymore. Um, not only was that foot not any better, um, in fact, it was more swollen, but the other foot, the one that I told you guys, the bone was like touching bone. Uh, there was no cartilage left and there was a couple of spots there that on the x-ray looked like almost like a bone spur, but the vet said that it was like where it could potentially be that this um, septic you know, bacteria or whatever is already starting to infect that joint. We went out that morning and uh, the other morning and Mar Marigold's other foot was, or ankle, was all swollen up. Um, so I called the vet and, you know, asked her, is there anything else that we can do? And uh, there really isn't. There's not any other reasonable can be done by a local vet um, options for her. So um, unfortunately, we did have to um, have her euthanized. And, you know, the vet, I, I really appreciated her. She was so wonderful. And she told me, like, this is the most humane thing. Because, you know, I had told her, <laughs> wasp. I told her from the beginning, like, I want to be fair to Marigold. If she can't be a duck, then I don't want to hobble her along and all of that. Like, if she can't, she couldn't even walk. And by the last day, she couldn't even stand. Like, we have her in, uh, we had her in, like, a small space for sleeping at night. And she couldn't even stand in there. So she was absolutely miserable. And it was actually, I hate to say, like, it sounds bad to say, but, like, I was anxious to get her to the vet for this procedure because I just felt like every minute that went by I felt like she was in so much pain and it felt so unfair to her um, like I just wanted her to be out of pain at that point like knowing that there was nothing else we could do I just wanted her to be out of pain it's never easy it's never fun it's always tough on the kids uh, but they you know they bounce back quickly but it's just you know it's part of that cycle of of life something that my kids have just learned all too well unfortunately the same day that I called the vet about Marigold not doing well we discovered one of the chickens had been attacked by something in our yard in the middle of the day uh, the storm kind of came in and we noticed that after the storm left, it like blew in, blew out. And after the storm left, she was sitting in the grass, uh, just completely soaking wet. Chickens usually get away from rain, but she was in the middle of the yard soaking wet. There was a bunch of feathers all around her um, and she was bleeding from a couple of places um, like her mouth and her rear end. But we could not figure out who did it. What, like it wasn't the dogs, it wasn't that kind of attack, you know, we checked the dogs. All we can deduce is that I think one of two things happened. I think either a hawk came down and tried to get her and that um, the reason that she was like gurgling and bleeding from her mouth was maybe she had like the, the claws of the hawk had like punctured a lung because we couldn't see any visible injuries on her body. Now um, we didn't like examine her inch by inch but we couldn't see anything major. So I think that either a hawk tried to get her and that's why there's like there was like some tufts of hay feathers and because she was a fully grown you know hen and, and she was probably too big for the hawk to carry away or at that point the dogs went barking that direction earlier so I think that maybe they scared it off or it could have been a raccoon or a fox we have seen raccoons I've, I've seen one raccoon in the middle of the day just strutting across our yard like it was no big thing the foxes will get brazen they'll come out in broad daylight when they're not successful at night so I mean it's spring animals have babies are trying to feed so both it's both like a fun time of year because all the birds and their little eggs and baby birds but it's also like a yeeks time of year because the other predator type animals are looking for prey for 
themselves and their babies. Anyway, so we lost a chicken, we lost Marigold, and uh, it was just kind of like a rough couple of days. So let's just get that out of the way and then we'll move on. Then we don't have to have that cloud hanging over us. Um, we'll package returns and we'll carry on about our business. All right, I am here at Target to pick up my pickup order. Just a couple of things, but it's a little it's a little um, thing I'm doing, doing the Target pickup so that I don't go inside and purchase things that I don't need. Because while I am an adult and I should refrain just based on my own ability as an adult to refrain, sometimes I just need the extra boost of the not an option. All right. So Got my little tote bag. I'm gonna take my Amazon returns into UPS store. Luckily, these are the kind that you don't have to package or anything. You just <clears throat> bring them in and they package them and send them back for you, which is handy dandy. My Amazon returns are done. I have to go to the post office, but you know, I've been wanting to do a little antique with me video for a while. And I just thought that uh, I would pop in here. There's two places in town that I really like to check in and just see what kind of stuff they have. The first place I'm gonna take y'all into is, it, they do have antiques, but it's also like consignment and stuff as well. So there's antiques, there's, you know, I, I guess you would say like custom made furniture. People can bring in stuff if, um, like if you refinish furniture, you can bring it in here and they'll sell it for you. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to have to talk y'all through this on a voiceover as we go through the antique store because the background music, um, copyright, you know? Anyways, so like I told you guys, you can see that there are some really cool like antiques in here and but there's also some like new stuff. First of all, they have like 5,000 ginger jars, variations of ginger jars, but I love this like wood table here, this entry table. And I feel like the prices aren't terrible. I mean, $7.99, it's not great. It's not like, you know, you've gone to some antique barn. And I'm always kind of on the hunt for things that maybe I could refinish if I don't like the wood. Though I have, you know, kind of grown, hello, a liking for some of the, you know, like, um, some of the already like stained wood. I just don't want it to be too red toned, but I do like some of that classic mahogany esque type stuff. But I also like to find stuff that maybe I could paint or refinish and then resell. I had to laugh when I saw this cabinet with the chicken wire in the front because I just thought, oh my God, one of my kids would ram their head through that in like 3.2 seconds and the chicken wire would be done. I love this cabinet. I love this display cabinet. This is one I have looked at in here multiple times and wanted to take home with me for my kitchen area for, you know, like serving dishes and stuff to just kind of like have them on display, but also have them available. I'm always, I'm, I'm hesitant with anything that is like a glass front. Oh, I saw this vanity. Sorry, this is gonna feel very squirrely because I'm trying to talk through it, but that vanity I thought would be really pretty uh, repaint, like repainted, refinished. And I really loved these bird prints. I'm on the lookout for the perfect egret picture because egrets are my favorite, but most of the bird pictures you find in these places are like herons and flamingos and stuff. But I'm looking for like the perfect egret picture. So, and then it made me sad because I saw these duck bookends and I was like, oh, marigold. There's a lot of duck stuff in here this time. I felt like, I don't know, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, have I just never noticed all the duck stuff before or am I noticing it now because of Marigold? Also the typewriter, I don't know if y'all can see that, that old, like this vintage typewriter. I stood there for a minute and thought, if you listen to true crime, okay, you know that there's certain bad guys, I, I don't wanna use the terminology, there's certain bad guys that have used typewriters to like write notes and stuff to the police and they were busted because of matching. I guess every typewriter has like a very distinctive, I don't know if it's a serial number or what it is, but there's a way to figure out if a let, like what typewriter a letter was written on or typed on, not written, but typed. Anyways, and I thought I should buy, every time I see an antique typewriter, I should buy it just in case it was like used in a crime previously and I need to like help the police solve a crime. Yeah. So anyways, there's that. Don't judge me for my weird thoughts, okay? This is what it is to antique with me, is you get to know the weird things I think about when I see this stuff. This was the other cabinet that I was looking at for the homeschool room. Remember I told you there was two? This is the other one that I was looking at. Uh, but 
I'm glad I went with the one that I went with. And remember, we've had this conversation before about the audacity of lamps to cost as much as they do. I felt like the, that wasn't terrible compared to some I've seen, but I'm still a TJ Maxx Marshalls girl pretty much all the way when it comes to lamps because they're crazy. I also really like this cabinet. I don't know what my deal is with cabinets, these oversized cabinets lately, but I really like them because they hold a lot of crap is probably why. But you can see like some of the furniture in here is pretty new, like those chairs and there's some sofas and stuff in here that are pretty new. So not everything is you know vintage or antique or whatever it's all kind of kind of mixed in these tables and stuff i love the striped sofas uh and they're on sale and i would love to have them if i didn't have children they these are obviously old but they remind me of my grandma and they're big and oversized and comfy and i would love to have them but my kids would do a number on those sofas so they won't be coming home with me hopefully whoever gets them enjoys them this is my dream, y'all, to have a place where I could have bookshelves like these with the sliding ladder. I love that so much. Nowhere in my house for it. This is one of my favorite rooms in the whole place. So I don't know if you can tell, but every room kind of has a, well, not every room, but most rooms have kind of like a color scheme or a theme to them. There's like an orange room and a blue room and all of that, which I think is, I think it's fun. I also really like these glass bamboo tables. I don't need one, but they're a really good price. I have nowhere to put that in my house. I won't be purchasing it, but I like them a lot. And I also really like fell for this fishy vase because it reminded me of my grandma. So I don't know. I, I like taking videos of this stuff, which I do even when I'm not putting these in vlogs, you guys, because it helps me remember what I saw. And if there's anything that I'm like, want, I wanna go back for, I try, you know, unless I just fall in love with something instantly and have to have it, I usually try to like make myself wait and then go back, make sure that I really want it, make sure it's gonna fit in a place. But anyways, I, all some of this like oversized farmhouse furniture stuff, I'm like, ooh, it's nice, big, big cabinets, pretty floral prints and stuff. And you can see, I don't know if you could see that at the top, the names of the rooms, but um, oh, look, it's another duck, another duck. Ooh. Told you all the ducks everywhere but every room like has a name and then kind of a color scheme to it um and then when i was back here i saw that there was a bathroom and well when you've given birth to four children and a set of twins you see a bathroom and you use it i mean i don't know about y'all but if there's a bathroom i'm gonna use it especially if it's clean and i thought i turned the camera off and i set it on the back of the toilet and then realized when i stood up that i didn't turn it off so i did cut that out but I laughed to myself when I got up off the toilet and was like, oh my God, I just recorded myself going to the bathroom. So that's cool. Um, you're welcome that I did not include that footage in today's vlog. Now this picture, I really liked. I really liked this one, but I have nowhere in my house for it. Absolutely nowhere that that will fit because well, we don't really have walls. We have walls, but we don't have like blank wall space. This cabinet, I don't know if I got a good picture, I didn't. It's curved at the top, it's really pretty. And this is the other thing that I wish I just would have bought while I was there, because it'll probably be gone when I go back, this copper pour. And this eager picture, I loved, but it was too expensive. It was a set of two and I didn't like the other picture and it was too expensive, so I left it behind. But um, yeah, anyways, there was some fun like bamboo and rattan and wicker type furniture in here. Uh, lots of like kind of coastal things. I love the like, you know, duos of bird pictures and stuff, but there's always one that the bird has a very phallic looking beak. And I just know that it's, it's not my jam. And my husband will be like, really? We're bringing that home? So the bird pictures, man, some of them are really good and some of them are absolutely terrifying. Anyways, uh, I liked those bamboo picture frames, but I already have ones very similar that are gold. Now this was another piece that I was very much considering. Um, well, first of all, I have other pieces of furniture that have these same knobs. So it's either from the same era or the same original maker, I'm not sure. I thought I could maybe refinish that piece. Uh, and then the chicken picture made me laugh. I also really liked these pillows, but I felt like, again, I mean, it's not that I expect things to be like dirt cheap or anything, because this is like consignment and not an antique store necessarily, but I don't know. Some things I'm just like, oh, I'm not paying that much. This is the other cabinet that I really love and would love to put in our kitchen if we ever get rid of the mini split air conditioning units so I can utilize that whole wall. Do you see how tall this thing is? And it has that twist knob, so it like locks at the top and keeps the doors closed. What a dream. I want that very much. 
Um, and they had tons, like I said, tons of like the ginger jars and stuff. I also really loved these bird lamps. Uh, I thought those were so cute. And I tried to film it so you could see that is a giant, giant ginger jar. That thing is like 18 inches or more tall. It's huge. And so were these chairs. I felt like I couldn't get a good frame of reference to show you how big some of the furniture was in here. It was these lamps, same thing. I love these. If I had a big enough entry table that could make those, uh, like could accommodate those, those lamps are stunning and they're huge and I love them. Uh, I'm going to show you that cabinet in the back right corner. Oh, I love it so much. I've looked at it multiple times. I have nowhere for it and my kids would destroy it because it's like a, it, I don't know, it's from like the early 1800s or something. I can't remember, but it needs some repair work and everything. It's a beautiful, beautiful pine armoire, but it needs some work that I can't do. Oh no, my battery's going to die. Okay. I'm home. I'm home from the errand, but I was just coming out to start working on a project out here. And hold on, I'm gonna show you this cute child. Can you swing in? Oh, I hear the rain coming. You hear the rain? On the leaves? Where's Beth? Uh, probably under the bush. Fighting snakes. I told them about the snake issue. Anyways, my children, because they are their mother's daughter, Kennedy yesterday and she goes mom look what I found and it's this bird I'm like why are you holding this giant bird that's just sitting there blinking at me I don't know the birds blink is that she brought the bird in and she said but it was injured and I'm like what are you talking about looks fine she said it was laying under the fence she thinks it's paralyzed blah 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 I told her I'm sure it's fine the baby's just stunned go put it back so she tells me she's gonna do that she tells me she's gonna do that and then last night, I'm washing my face. She comes in the bathroom and she goes, Mom, don't be mad. I'm like, what? She's like, I have the bird in my room. I'm like, oh my gosh, I told you to go put the bird back. No, she didn't. She said, but Mom, I really think she's paralyzed. She can't. So she put her into uh, like a small enclosure and gave her food and water, but the bird is not moving. Um, like she's drinking, she, I assume she. She's drinking, sipping the water, nibbling on the food, she pooped. But bird can't seem to like walk. Like if you stand her up, she like puts her feet down, but then she like kind of just like lays down. So this morning, Kennedy called the bird rescue. The Carolina Audubon Society. Yeah, the Carolina Audubon Society. The closest like rescue is 45 minutes away in Columbia. Um, anyways, so now that's the next thing on the agenda is we got to drive. Christopher has volunteered <laughs> um, because mostly because he knows I need to be sorting those boxes in the garage of clothes that are either going to go for sale on my Poshmark or <laughs> go to the Goodwill or whatever. And so he's like, no, 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 I'll take the bird. You stay here and do the boxes because he's been wanting me to do these boxes because they're taking up space in our garage. And I was like, I'll take the bird. He's like, no, 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 no. I, the kids and I will take the bird. You stay here and organize the boxes so that's what i'm doing this guy's got his shirt on inside out and backwards i don't know what's happening i don't know what's happening down here either your shirt is on inside out and backwards son oh 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 why and charlotte's licking you in the face who's scream who's screaming that was a chicken that screamed like that that sounded like a child gosh these chickens sometimes okay anyway so cr's and the girl the pathetic. Oh. Sir? Oop, you felt that rain drop. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Rake a reason for us. Quit the barking. All right, so. All right, Benny, you gotta go get your shoes on. You guys are gonna go take the bird to the bird rescue, okay? okay. Mommy's gonna stay here and clean out the garage. <laughs> okay. Bird rescue! Okay, you guys get to hang with me, unfortunately. And, um,. Let me show you this creepy little mannequin that I have, though. So I got this saucy little minx here to uh, help me list my clothes on Poshmark. What do you guys think? What movie is that? Oh, um, shoot. Robin Hood Men in Tights. Master Robin, you lost your arms in battle, but you grew some nice boobs. I'm gonna, like, 
clear some space in here. It's a bit of a disaster. And I'm gonna try to bring in at least a few boxes before the rain hits. I kinda gotta pee too, so let me take care of that. Let's get to work. gonna be cutthroat. I'm gonna do a little research to see. Ah! I'm gonna fall in the box. I'm gonna do a little research to see if some of these brands, do people actually buy them on Poshmark, you know? Carly Jean, like the Carly Jean dresses and stuff that I have. Do people rebuy buy that stuff on Poshmark? I see a bunch of shorts. I don't see any dresses. Maybe, maybe. One box empty. Gosh, now I'm hot. One box empty, a lot more to go. That was my first and refuge t-shirt. I love this shirt, but this is a large. So it's like a photography dress. Just try to hold on to that. Ah! Bless me. All right, you guys. I went through a bunch of tubs of clothing that I have been saving in my garage for, I don't know, four years at this point, some of them, uh, because I kept intending to sell certain things on, on Poshmark or some site, and I just have never done it. So obviously they're not listed yet, but this is the stuff I'm, I'm selling, and I donated quite a bit. So I moved all the donation stuff to the back of the van so I can take that. And this is just the stuff that I'm gonna be selling. I have a lot of things that are new with tags, a lot of free people stuff. Um, I By the time this video goes up, this stuff won't be listed on Poshmark yet. Uh, I gotta make sure I have all my ducks in a row for packaging and shipping and all of that. Cause obviously I want everybody to have a wonderful customer experience. So if you are interested in that kind of thing, um, then, I will link in the description box my Poshmark. I don't even know y'all, I'm not a Poshmarker. So it's, what is it, a storefront or something? I don't know what they call it. But I'll link it down below so you can go ahead and follow me there if you want to see when this stuff actually um, starts getting listed. And probably what I'll do is do it in batches and start with the stuff that people can wear now and maybe wait to list the fall stuff. I don't know. I don't know how all of that works. I don't know if people buy sweaters in the off season, etc. So I'll probably start with spring summer stuff and then move on to the other stuff but I do have quite a bit of things I've got a lot of eventually I'll also be adding some handbags and um, I definitely have some shoes and stuff but I'll be adding I've got a number of like noonday bags and stuff that I'll be adding on there again I have quite a few of those even that are brand new never even opened if you're into that you can go follow me over there if you're not well Wish me luck because this is going to be a bit of an undertaking, but hopefully I can get this stuff done and then I will feel so free to just be able to stay on top of it and have one bin where as I remove stuff from my closet and I'm decluttering and getting rid of stuff, if there's things that I'm not going to donate, I can just have like a Poshmark bin that they go in and get them listed and get them out of here quickly rather than some of this stuff just being in storage totes for a long, long time. All right, so anyways, there we go. Uh, I am also gonna apologize now for how shaky some of the footage is in this video. Every time I use this small camera, my Sony, I always feel like it does a better job of stabilization than it does. It doesn't feel as shaky when I'm filming, and when I go to edit, it's wildly shaky. So, again, I know it's, I act like I'm new here, but um, I apologize. I, I will, I will improve, I promise. Mm -hmm.